Thank you, Dr. Dybul. Thank you, Hannah. Your Excellencies, the Right Honorable David Johnston, Governor General of Canada, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Gates, Bono, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Before I begin, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to the International Civil Aviation Organization for hosting us today. It is an honor to be with you all today, but also to be amongst the greatest number of heads of states and government ever present at a replenishment conference. Your presence clearly demonstrates that the whole world is united in the fight against HIV, TB, malaria ep epidemics. And we've made significant progress towards our goal after the first day of pledges. But we must carry this momentum forward to the end of the day. Because this replenishment conference is first and foremost a message of hope to the world. We have a unique opportunity today to mark Montreal as the place where we decided together to end these epidemics for good by 2030. To maintain the gains and to accelerate progress, our ambitious goal is to raise 13 billion US dollars. These resources will allow the Global Fund to save millions more lives, support partner countries to build resilient and sustainable health systems, and enable us to continue our work to advance human rights and gender equality. <coughs> Le monde fait face actuellement à de grands défis. Outre ces épidémies de sida, de tuberculose et de paludisme, les crises et les conflits sont de plus en plus nombreux, de plus en plus longs. Les changements climatiques menacent l'accès à l'eau, la santé, et même la sécurité de millions de personnes, et plus particulièrement les femmes et les filles. En 2016, le monde a battu un triste record. On compte maintenant 65 millions de réfugiés. Des frontières se ferment, la violence et l'intolérance augmentent. Alors ce n'est pas un hasard si aujourd'hui nous sommes réunis autour du Fonds mondial. C'est parce que nous savons, d'instinct et d'expérience, que la seule façon de relever de tels défis consiste à nous unir, à mettre nos ressources et nos talents en commun. Gouvernements du Nord et du Sud, organisations internationales, sociétés civiles, secteurs privés et activistes. Aujourd'hui, à Montréal, nous avons décidé ensemble d'en finir avec le sida, la tuberculose et le paludisme, et d'en finir pour de bon d'ici 2030. Est-ce possible? Bien sûr que c'est possible. Souvenez-vous en l'an 2000, alors que le sida était une condamnation à mort. Le monde s'est rallié et voyez où on est rendu. At the apex of the AIDS crisis 15 years ago, the world rallied and said, We can do this. We can push back against this epidemic. And as Mr. Ban Ki-moon said recently in South Africa, 16 years ago, less than 1% of all people living with HIV in poorer countries had access to treatment, and many died waiting for drugs. But look where we are right now. 20 million lives saved. 9.2 million people under antiretroviral treatments. The number of AIDS-related deaths is down by 45%. Over 800 million malaria cases averted globally in the last five years. And the cost of medicines and bed nets keep decreasing. By working in partnership, 
With the most affected countries, the Global Fund is also helping to build stronger health systems. I was in Senegal two weeks ago, and my counterpart shared with me how the government of Senegal was able to better respond to the Ebola crisis and save even more lives through its investment in, in its health system, thanks to the Global Fund. So now, we have moved from saying we can push back against these epidemics to we can end these epidemics for good by 2030. This is a powerful message of hope to the world. Hope that we can address the root causes of these diseases, poverty and inequality. And as you know, poverty is sexist. Women and girls are still the most affected by the double challenge of poverty combined with epidemics. And we know that poverty is fueled by inequalities and marginalization. But by supporting the Global Fund, we are reaching and working with the most vulnerable populations, the displaced, the migrants, the sexually exploited, the young girls forced into marriage, drug users, sex workers, those persecuted for their sexual orientation. Today, we are not just supporting a medical response. We are fighting for human rights, <coughs> for gender equality, for women and girls. And Canada is committed to helping the poorest and the most vulnerable by lending its voice to those who need it most, by working with partners to find common solutions to uphold human dignity. Thank you. <laughs>